The United States would run out of avocados in three weeks if we shut down our borders to Mexico. That would be a real aguacalypse. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to brag, but I'm going to brag. Mexico is like super chingon. And if you don't think so, then you just don't know everything Mexico has to offer that people in the US use on the daily. Here you go, burrito with a side of guac and an order of avocado toast. If they close the border, I'll have to cancel my yoga retreat to Tulum. Why doesn't Mexico just pay for the wall already? I mean, like, what have they given us lately anyway? I am glad you asked, young lady. But, uh, uh, um, also this one, this is for my country. You can enjoy the burrito, brah, brah. Bro. I'll take this too, thanks so much. Well, I didn't know Bloody Marys were Mexican. It's not just thirsty, also. No straw. This is the exit. Have a good day, guys. So basically, if what you know about Mexico is based on today's headlines, then you probably think that all Mexico does is take from the United States. And that argument, amigo mio, is as weak as a thin chip in guacamole. No bueno. For starters, in 2018, Mexico was the US's second largest importer and exporter of goods. We're talking billions of dollars going both ways, folks. So if the US cuts ties, Mexico won't be the only one to suffer. People in the US will suffer too, especially foodies. You see, avocados are the new sweetheart of the produce section. And without Mexico, the United States could really end up between a guac and a hard place. Joke. Not only does Mexico play a massive role in the production of avocados, but also in their roots. In 1969, this guy named Claude Earl Smith Jr. found 10,000-year-old bits of avocado pits in a Coxcatlan cave in the state of Puebla, showing that avocados are native to central Mexico. Those are some deep roots, mi amigos. You see, avocados were first enjoyed by Mesoamerican tribes, and they called them aguacatl, which is the nahuatl word for testicles. <laughs> Maybe because avocados were considered an aphrodisiac, or maybe... Just look at this thing. What's the, what's the first thing you think of? <whistles> Back to the story. So, after the Spanish arrived, avocados took on some other names, like aguacate and alligator pear. In 1914, US farmers finally settled on avocado. I guess the reptile and testicle-based names were a tough sell. Or would you buy a green testicle? So, basically, without Mexico, avocado production around the world would be, like, super pitiful. You see, Mexico is the world's largest avocado supplier by far. The second place contender is California, but it doesn't even come close and doesn't have a long enough growing season to catch up, which means no mas avocate. So, cutting ties with Mexico would be totally whacked up. And guess what? It's not just avocados. Mexico's top US exports are cars and car parts. Then there's machinery, oil, cervezas, and other agricultural products. So here is a thought. Before we start raising walls and tariffs and guac up our relationship, why don't we let the world know how much we love each other, how much we support each other, and how tied up we are? Maybe you want to tell your politicians what you think through the phone, through letters, through tweets, and voting. We are neighbors. Hell, we're cousins. We're literally family. We belong to the same planet. For that, provecho. Yeah. Good. Well, but can you define chingon? Chingon? Chingon is the most amazing state of tacos are chingones. Party is chingona. When she replies back, it's chingon. Things that are not chingon when you step into water with socks. Life is full of chingon, you know? It's about perspective. 